Is there a strong man in the church today? Today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. This is probably going to be a short podcast today because uh, we, we're on like spring break. So, but anyway, I found some cool stuff to talk about. ExaltJesusMemphis.org. You want to check that out? ExaltJesusMemphis.org. There's going to be a gathering of the body of Christ in Memphis to worship the Lord Jesus on April fourth, twenty fifteen from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Redbird Stadium. That's AutoZone Park. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. Memphis exalts Jesus. You can check out the website at exaltjesusmemphis.org. A gathering of the body of the Christ in Memphis to worship the Lord Jesus, April 4th, 2015, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Redbird Stadium. So check it out. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're excited about that. Finally, you know, finally something going on. Uh, we're starting to meet some sold out peeps in the Lord from there too. Also, Camp Pentecost is coming up. Uh, we're excited about that. Gonna get to celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Um, now, another thing as well. Recently, well, there's been revelation poured out all over the internet by people all over the world just getting excited about God and also there's a void too. There's, um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. There is water from the throne all around, man. We just got a drink. You know, we're thirsty, uh, as the deer panteth for the water. You know, we're thirsty for the Lord. And I believe this void that we're experiencing right now is going to be filled. I mean, all we got to do is just get out there and do it. Maybe this exalt Jesus Memphis is going to um have a part play a part but we're 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 seriously seeking for revival in this area the time is now and the place is memphis amen also the devil's attacking people all over the place as well while people while we see waves of the revelation of people getting all this awesome revelation uh, uh all over the world it's really interesting to watch in the social media and some of the churches and it's pretty cool i mean it's it's really awesome to just stand back and go that's god you know, the devil is attacking people all over the place from, you know, from potholes, blowing out tires on the way to a Bible study to several attempts of suicide. I've seen that recently on the outer fringes of the people that I know. This is basically a byproduct of spiritual warfare. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. And the devil, he gets upset when he sees something it's about to happen. He tries to kill all the babies. Remember when he tried to kill Moses? Just kill all the babies. You know, that's what he was doing. And then when Jesus was born, kill all the babies, right? And then look at now. There, we've killed so many babies with abortion. You know, the devil is mad. He knows his time is short. And we're coming up on the Shemitah year. You know, we're in the Shemitah year. We're almost coming up on the Jubilee year. I mean, there's stuff going on. You know, there's stuff going on. I don't quite understand all of that, but we're sitting back and we're just watching this stuff come forth. And we see the devil, he is on the rampage right now. So the first thing is we just need to understand that, you know. Also, during all this revelation, a lot of people, I want to encourage you and say that I I understand how you feel. A lot of people are upset with the institutional corporate church. And I get it, man. I get it. You know, God can and does use a lot. Most people that are probably listening to this were baptized in the corporate church. Um, God c- does and can use the corporate church. I want to, I want to remind you that, um, you know, we were watching Jack Coe last night, corporate church. William Branham, he was in a corporate church. A.A. A. Allen worked within the corporate church. Amy Simple McPherson worked within a corporate church setting. Uh, Maria Woodworth Etter, you know, she, <laughs> she had a problem. Smith Wigglesworth, but they all worked within a corporate church setting. So, you know, while it has its shortfalls, 
um, a lot of us are having this tendency to take the sword of, sword of the Lord, which is the word of God, and divide ourselves from each other, saying, look, what you're doing isn't biblical. Well, I'm going to tell you what you're doing is probably not biblical either. What I'm doing is probably, we're not, we're not all that in a bag of chips. We need to be humble and just recognize the problem and ask the Spirit of God to fix it. You know, I'm just like, Lord, I can't fix it. You know, I cannot fix this. I cannot, you cannot give this to Conrad and say, well, let me just fix it. Mm -mm, It's got to be God. And I believe in presence evangelism. That's why we're going to start worshiping in the parks again and just lifting up the name of Jesus. You know, just doing that. And when people come in, when they encounter the presence of God, they're going to have an Acts chapter 9 encounter and their life is changed like the woman at the well she encountered jesus on a dry hot day at high noon she was so excited she left her water there and got a whole town saved when you come into an encounter with jesus things change so for those of you that are upset with the corporate church denominationalism and stuff like that i understand i get it i'm with you i'm with you you know we can't just it's not about going to a a building once a week And listening to a sermon. It's not that. We are supposed to have fellowship each day. You know, they broke bread from house to house. Ministered the gifts one to another. I get it. I'm frustrated too. But you know what? People have been. You were probably saved and baptized in a corporate church setting. So just remember that. Remember that. Now, we uh, went to Lake Grenada. And we went to Hugh White State Park. And uh, we prayed, and uh, I had a vision of this really strong arm (laughs) with some strings to several churches, and he could move them around at will. And I decided to um, just turn on the recorder, and just Susan and I just talk about, you know, what's on our heart, what we were praying about that day. And here it is. You're having coffee with Conrad. On March 12th, 2015. We are at... Grenada Lake. Hugh, Hugh White State Park. And right now, it's 727. It's froggy. You can't see. And the sun is coming up, but it's not. You can't see. Yeah. It's very foggy. It's cool, though. Neat you hear the geese? Mm-hmm. Flying over the water. Oh, the water. You hear that? Look at that. You can see them. That's something that rocks. If I could do an audio hashtag, I would. That's cool. So we were praying this morning, and we were talking about... Well, during prayer, I saw this... I had to figure out what it was, but I saw this really strong arm, like Mr. Clean. You know, a big, strong right arm. Right arm, that's all I saw. And a big, huge hand, like a very muscular man. And then he had these strings to these little, like, you know, they look like Monopoly pieces, these churches. And he had strings to all of them, and he could just pull them wherever he wanted. Mm-hmm. And then... I believe so far that that's the strong man of denominationalism. Mm -hmm. Because every time you have to do something, you have to run it through your denomination. Yeah. And I think we think, you know, when we think denominationalism, we just think about, oh, the Baptist and the Methodist and the Pentecostals and there. But I think it goes beyond what we think of in that sense because there's all kind of organization and groups who are out there ministering the gospel that put all kinds of different rules and regulations on men that may or may not be based in scripture some of it is based in scripture but then they'll take it to another level and add on all these other requirements so that the Holy Spirit is not really free to move in the average person but that's exactly how the that's exactly what the Holy Spirit is for, is to move on ordinary men and women to accomplish the purpose of God. But you have to run. Oh, hold on. Jesus is talking, but let me run it through my denomination yeah. first. And let me that's, check with my 
I've got to go to my elders and have them approve this, or I need a board of supervisors, or I. Need, and you know, and I've always believed in that. To be honest, my whole life I've I've been raised in a very, I guess, structured kind of environment. So I've always thought, well, yeah, that's right, that's good. You want to have, you want to make sure there's no error that some false prophet doesn't come in and deceive the church. But see, Jesus is the head of the church. And he's the one that can prevent the false prophet from spreading the untruth. What's unfortunate is the very people we put over us in our churches, in our organizations, in our different ministries, a lot of times those very people are the very people who end up spreading and, you know... Or rejecting the move of God. Rejecting the move of God, but also spreading untruth, too, and getting off into error. When groups get off into error, it's usually led by very strong people who are in a position of leadership. Very often, so. And they also have they have to run everything through their their like we we, we were reading this morning about how a denomination was voting on gay marriage. Gay marriage. How do you vote? How do you vote on the what? will of God? How do you vote we're on what the Bible the says? The will of God by majority vote. I mean, that's like shaking your fist <laughs> at God, right? Yeah. But also, you know, if, you know, I, I'm kind of radical, so when people listen to me, you know, it's like, wow, I can't be really considered condoning what Conrad says because it's just too out there. Yeah. Even though it may be biblical and in your face scary, mm-hmm. you know. Um, well, and I'll, I'll be honest, when I met Conrad early on, that was one of the first things I thought as well. He just needs to be involved. He needs to be <laughs> under a pastor in a church and then... I really felt that way, and the more I've read the scriptures, the more I realize that that thinking was completely wrong. The prophets are sent to the church. If you go, even in the Old Testament, it wasn't the church, but the prophets were sent to the nation of Israel to uh, to to give them words that they could not hear, would not hear. In their, from God themselves. And they were and so, already, it was scriptural stuff too. Well, I mean, there wouldn't be a prophetic ministry if you had to have it inside an institutional structure. I mean, it's completely contrary to that whole idea. The prophetic ministry is designed, its purpose, that the reason God made it in the first place was to give us revelation from heaven that we weren't getting on our own, that we weren't hearing for whatever reason. And, so we have to stop putting God in a box and deciding he can't move because he doesn't do it the way we think he should. Very often, those structures that have been put in place are to prevent God from moving, not to protect us. It's just the opposite. In fact, it doesn't protect us at all. It leads us into error and keeps us from doing the will of God. Amen. Well, I'm through. Hopefully this recording is strong enough. May, March 12th, 2015 at Hugh White State Park on Grenada Lake. Do we meet again? Dig deeper. Go Go higher. Anyway, I thought about this podcast for quite a bit. I'm on a, I'm on vacation right now and it's kind of hard to, to have a really long podcast, but I just want to let you know. I, I say this humbly. I don't, I'm not throwing rocks at anybody because I realize I could be wrong about something. You know, I was, I was thinking about how Jack Coe and William Branham, they had amazing gifts, but they, they died before they should have. You know, they died in, in unexpected ways. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to be humble. I don't want to make the mistakes that other people have made. You know, and, and who knows? You can still make a new mistake. You know, I know there's nothing new under the sun, but maybe there's something that I don't get. So I'm always like, you know, I'm humble. We shouldn't throw, we shouldn't throw rocks at our brothers and sisters in Christ. We really shouldn't. Um, so, you know, God bless you. Just keep seeking the Lord. Keep seeking the Lord for yourself. That's all I can say. And, uh, you know, let's get back to God. Let's get back to Acts. That's why I feel about it. Let's just lift up the name of Jesus and let him change things. You know what I mean? Amen. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher. 
Hi, this is John with John Shaba House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Amy from Amy Daly. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Holydesperationministries.org. Jackie Smith from the Intentional Christian Panure Podcast. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki of Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are Andy Coffee with Conrad. ConradRock.net. Do you Conrad Rocks. Tune in radio.